I'm being sponsored by a child in Africa. <laughs> Stand-up comedy, man. This is, uh, this is a tough business. I don't mean to rain on anyone's parade. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to make money doing this. Uh, my financial situation is so bad right now that I'm being sponsored by a child in Africa. <laughs> I can't, I can't even pay my bills on time. I don't pay my bills on time. If you don't pay your bills on time, this is what happens. Uh, a couple weeks later, you get another one in the mail that'll be read, and it'll say something like, urgent, please pay immediately, right? Like, just because the bill's read, I'm gonna all of a sudden have the money to pay for it. <laughs> it's like, relax, electric provider. I know it's urgent. I'm reading your bill by candlelight. <laughs> oh. I don't know, I get insecure about like the little money that I make. Like I got stuck in this conversation recently with a couple of wealthy people. And one of them asked me how my investments were doing. I, I, I told them both avocados should be right by tomorrow. <laughs> Off, man. Like, if I go to a restaurant, I, I never look at the name of the dish. I just look to see if I could afford it. You know? I'm like, yes, waiter, I'll have a water and the $6.95. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are coming out with a book now, like, like actors, dentists, musicians. It's, it's like the latest get-rich-quick scheme. I was at the bookstore the other day, and I saw a book that was titled How I Got Rich from Selling Books. <laughs> written by an average guy. <laughs> right? I bought the book, took it home, opened it up. It just read, thanks. <laughs> I've watched a lot of these like antique appraisal shows where people bring their antiques in to find out how much that stuff is worth, right? And this is what I noticed, crowd, that when white people bring antiques in, they're always worth money. <laughs> and when black people bring antiques in, they're not. <laughs> like a white person bring antique in, and the appraiser's like, wow, this is an original copy of the Bill of Rights. It's worth a fortune. And then a black person will bring antique in, and the appraiser's like, wow, this is your grandfather's old heating bill. <laughs> It's not worth anything. <laughs> In fact, he owes 80 bucks. So, <laughs> the, the bill's still red, you know? <laughs> so. I used to work at a warehouse before doing this. Uh, I didn't really care for the job, but like a warehouse job, sometimes it could be like an easier job to get because you don't need like a lot of different skills to work at a warehouse. Like I remember the day I applied, I went in, I asked the boss where the applications were. He's like, they're over there under that box. I go over there, I lift up the box. He's like, congratulations, you got the job. <laughs> it was stressful working there, so you wouldn't think like that job would be stressful. But you know the job is stressful when just to make it through the day, you start humming Negro spirituals. <laughs> and your white coworkers join in with you. That's, <laughs> that's how you know. I worked at this, uh, this shipping warehouse and we had to be careful because the penalty for shipping hazardous material without the proper paperwork was $250,000 or up to 10 years in prison. 10 years in prison. You know, it's gotta be really embarrassing being the guy going to prison for that. You know, he gets there and cellmate's like, so how long are you in there for? He's like, 10 years. Oh, what'd you do? <sighs> I shipped a gallon of paint without a hazmat sticker. <laughs> 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 I 
cellmate's like, you too? <laughs> I don't know if everybody here voted. I don't care who for. But here's the thing. People always talk about how voting is so important and how you have to vote. And if you don't vote, you can't complain. That's why now I just vote so that I can complain. <laughs> Right? I don't even care what it's about. Like, my wife's like, Matt, can you please stop complaining about washing the dishes? I'm like, whoa, stop right there. I voted. <laughs> this is my right. <laughs> I don't know how it is here. I'm, I'm from Jersey. I, uh, I constantly get pulled over by the police. Constantly get pulled over by the police. I don't know why that is. <laughs> but you know you get pulled over by the police a lot when they ask for your license registration and you're like, no need. I've already got an account with you guys. <laughs> Here's something you should never say to a cop if you get pulled over. Uh, like, what a coincidence, in my glove compartment, I've got the exact same gun. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> Any police officers here tonight? Any undercover police officers here tonight? <laughs> I feel like a lot of young black people are wrongfully in prison, right? That's why if I ever have a kid, I want to name them Case Dismissed. <laughs> the judge is like, uh, State of New Jersey versus Case Dismissed. <laughs> You're free to go, son. <laughs> Your dad got me. <laughs> out of here. And I think as a society, as a society, uh, I want to get rid of the death penalty. I think we need to get rid of the death penalty and I want to implement something more severe. <laughs> Punishing criminals by making them work in retail. <laughs> right? And judges like, guilty, I hereby sentence you to life at Kohl's. <laughs> Defendant's like, ah, oh, man, I knew I should have taken that Target plea bargain. <laughs> if I were ever on death row, though, if I were ever on death row, I would want my last meal to be a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Uh, just so I can go out on my own terms, thanks to my peanut allergy. <laughs> A lot of times when somebody gets locked up, they'll end up getting their college degree in prison, which is, which is great, right? But it also means that right now, college is so expensive that prison may soon be an affordable option. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Dad, I got some great news for you. I got in a state penitentiary. <laughs> in four years, I have my sociology degree. And in 20 to 25 years, I might be able to use it. <laughs> I, went to a, I went to a predominantly white school growing up. Uh, that's how I got this accent. <laughs> My parents sent me to a fancy college prep high school. And then after that, I went on to attend community college. <laughs> so if you really want to know how to disappoint your parents, <laughs> Have them pay more for your high school than your entire college education. <laughs> I'm the only person that I know who is still paying off high school loans. <laughs> I think like one of, the, uh, one of the worst ways to tell that I already peaked in life is when I opened a time capsule I buried in first grade and I thought to myself like, thank goodness I put five dollars in there. <laughs> so. I, don't, I think one of my problems, though, is one of my problems is I need to have like better goals for myself, right? Like sometimes I'll drive by like a big, beautiful, luxurious home, and I'll think to myself like, "Wow, one day I would love to clean that." <laughs> Trying to get into shape. I don't know if anyone here is trying to get into shape. Here's the thing, though. I stopped working out at the gym 
stopped working at the gym because everybody there is so much stronger than me. <laughs> right, that's why to feel better about myself, I started working out at the local physical rehabilitation center. <laughs> And I'm telling you, crowd, that's a huge ego boost right there. Because <laughs> I may not be able to bench press a lot, but I can certainly catch a tennis ball. <laughs> the therapist is like, you're doing great, Mr. Jenkins. I'm like, where do you see me walk? <laughs> I like to run, that's what I do for exercise. I, I run, a lot of people listen to like, uh, like hip hop music or rock music to really motivate themselves. But to really push myself, I listen to a playlist I have titled Civil Rights Movement. <laughs> it's just cops yelling get him and German shepherds barking. <laughs> uh, hey, I never ran faster. Uh, <laughs> uh, don't, don't get tight at that joke. I've, Got a darker one coming up. <laughs> so, so. People say that, uh, that yoga teaches you how to listen to your body. Well, so does Indian food. <laughs> right, if you really want to see how far you can stretch, order tikka masala and get stuck in traffic on the way home. Right? So. <laughs> I try to watch what I eat. I saw a pack of gummy worms the other day that said no artificial flavor. It's like, who buys gummy worms hoping they taste as close to real worms as possible? <laughs> <laughs> I watched this documentary recently too about, like the, uh, about the horrors of the meat industry. And it made such a big impact on me that I turned vegan uh, for the duration of the film. <laughs> Like, you know what? I'm not gonna touch this cheeseburger for another uh, 45 minutes and 13 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I watch a lot of those, like, uh, those reality cooking shows, like, uh, like Top Chef and Iron Chef. And I always wondered what they did with the food that they have left over. And then I looked it up and I found out that they donate that food to homeless shelters, to homeless shelters, right? Which is like a great thing to do, but it also means that right now, there could be a homeless guy out there, like, ah, oh, man, you gotta be kidding me. Foie gras again? <laughs> man, I miss pizza crust, you know? <laughs> the pizza crust line is too far, but. <laughs> uh, I was talking before about this being a, uh, a diverse crowd, and it, um, <laughs> it hasn't changed. <laughs> There's a lot of stereotypes about black people though, right? Feel free to yell some out. <laughs> a lot of stereotypes, have, like black people not being able to swim or growing up without their father. Unfortunately, in my case, those are both true. Uh, my father drowned to trying to teach me how to swim. So. <laughs> that would have been my dad's favorite joke, you know? It's, I'm a, big, uh, I'm a big movie buff, I watch movies all the time. One of my problems though with Hollywood is I feel like they keep making sequels to movies, right? Like I don't know if anyone here saw Taken 3 with Liam Neeson. It's the third in the Taken trilogy. That's why there's a three at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> I even heard this though, I heard this. Hollywood is coming out with a fourth one of those movies. They're making a fourth one. It's starring a ghetto family. It's called Took. <laughs> That's a well-written joke, you know? <laughs> you guys laughed a little too hard at it, to be honest. <laughs> I love horror movies.
movies. I'm a big fan of horror movies. Not a lot of people get into them, but the thing is, like, whenever you go to see a horror movie, if your date gets scared, you may have to comfort her by saying, it's okay, it's just a movie. Right? Like, horror is the only genre of movie where it's okay to just completely ruin the experience. <laughs> you know, you're never watching a romance. Your date starts crying once the couple reunites. Lean over and whisper, hey, it's okay. None of this would ever happen. <laughs> I grew up in the, uh, in the 90s, and I don't know if you know this, Disney hated black people in the 90s. Hated black people. Think about it. They made movies about white characters like Beauty and the Beast, Asian characters like Milan, Native American, Pocahontas, Middle Eastern, Aladdin. But as soon as it came to Africans, they were like, nope, talking animals. <laughs> The Disney executives are like, there's no way kids are gonna relate to black people. Make them lions that sing. <laughs> but have the main character grow up without a father. <laughs> it's their circle of life, you know? Some people got pretty tight on that joke, but Hakuna Matata. <laughs> I saw this bumper sticker. I saw this bumper sticker that said, if you love your freedom, thank a veteran. All right, so I found a veteran. I went over to him, I'm like, excuse me, sir. Thank you for my freedom. He's like, son, I didn't fight in that war. If you groan at that joke, your side lost the war. <laughs> I'll tell you guys this. Uh, it, it seems like nowadays everybody's on antidepressants, which is nothing to be ashamed about if anyone is on them. They even have this, though, crowd. They've got antidepressants for pets. Did you know that? Antidepressants for pets. <laughs> They're a lot cheaper than the ones for people. That's why I've been taking those. <laughs> I don't know if they're working, but I do feel a lot better <laughs> about peeing on the carpet. <laughs> a while ago, uh, a really good friend of mine, his dog Spike ran away for like two days, found the dog two days later, everything was cool. But while his dog Spike was missing, I made a fake Spike Facebook profile. And I sent my friend a friend request. <laughs> with a message reading, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> Heard you were looking for me. <laughs> and my friend writes back, stop playing around. This isn't a joke. Where are you? Thank goodness for technology, though. The, uh, the other day, this guy suddenly fainted next to me on the subway, and thankfully, I was able to take his iPad. So... <laughs> I joked uh, a lot about race tonight, and you guys were uh, pretty receptive to it, which is alarming. Uh... <laughs> Racism is still alive, though, unfortunately. Uh, any racists here tonight? <laughs> okay. I was hoping for a no. <laughs> My family fell victim to racism recently. We were on a cruise, and during lunch, you had to sit with other families, right? But no one would sit anywhere near us. And eventually, a Middle Eastern family came over and sat at our table. So, of course, we moved. <laughs> Oh my God, that was so funny. Oh, oh for more, 
Check out check out the Drybar app.